If you've reached that point in your life where you've had an extremely tiresome workout and the day after you feel battered, that's how I feel. Hi, I'm Steve. Today we are going to do an unboxing, assembly and basic review of the Ender 3 V3 Plus. Stay tuned. What's inside the box? Let's look inside the box. I hope there's a printer in the box. So as always, for anybody that follows our reviews, Creality do do a pretty good job of packing. Okay, so we have the manual, some Creality brand stickers, a bag of tools, grease, USB stick, cable ties, some other little bits and pieces, cable, the screen, side cutters, nozzle uncloggy tool. This is not for picking your nose with. Another springy contraption. This is basically to stop filament free spooling off the spool holder. We will show you later on in the video. Spool, spool holder. I'll put the sticker back on so I know which one that is. A brace, another brace. More foam. A machine. More foam. More foam. More foam. Lots of foam. More foam. Crelly hyper. Do not fall off the table. Stay. Finally. The brains of the outfit. And I shall. In fact, why not just dive straight in? I'm going to sit this in place because I don't want to risk it falling over. Just like so. Remove the other bits of foam. The machine. So this is a relatively simple machine to, to set up. I will talk you through the process as I proceed on set assembly. In fact, I think we may do an experiment. Can we do a timer? You can do a timer. So we can see how long it actually takes. So we'll do it in a traditional style. On your marks, get set, go. I'm not going to rush. I'm going to be steady, but you can soon see how quickly and easily this machine is to get up and running. I'm going to use my tool set for this because I have it handy. First thing, screw there, snug it down. Another screw. You can't go wrong with this machine, to be fair. All the screws are exactly the same size, same length, so you can't mix anything up. Remove the protected film holding the ribbon cable. Back of the screen, little socket, ribbon cable. Just be careful when doing this. You don't want to break the connectors. So it's in, locked in, clipped into place. You literally then just push the screen into place. Done. So we have these little gizmos, which are braces. What we have here, we have a little tab sticking out the back of the frame. This has a sticker on it that says for right. We have another little tab here sticking out the frame, which has L for left. The back of the machine, we have a hole and we have an opposing hole. What I'm going to do before I put any braces in, just because it'll probably be easier at this point, I'm going to plug these little cables in. And there we go. So that's... That first one plugged in. This cable is labelled X for the X axis. Pop that into the stepper motor. Make sure it's pushed home seated correctly, otherwise that will not work. This one is labelled the Z axis. So again, this goes into this stepper motor. Just make sure it's pushed in. Now we shall proceed with the braces. Huh. Left one. Dun, dun. Ooh. Ooh just when you're putting these in, just make sure it's lined up correctly. You don't want to be ramming the screws in and cross threading anything because it would give you a bad day. We will get a close up of this. The little plastic clip, which is here, appears to be on the lower portion. So that would indicate to me that we need to be that way down with that sticking out the side of the machine. Okay, now it's showing this cable, which clips into there. Then we have a plug, which is labeled D. I have no idea why D would be referring to the filament runout sensor. Detection, there, detection. So D is for detection. Educational television. Which leaves us this cable here, which pops into the top of the extruder. The little clip, the locking clip, faces the back. Push that down, make sure it's locked into place. Reverse Bowden tube, three little clip hose clips. So basically slide these over your, your Bowden tube, fit that into the extruder, pushes into the white push fit fitting at the front top of the extruder. So in the bag, cable tie. There's two holes in this, so literally feed cable tie up through, back through the opposing hole, snug that down, not overly tight, it's literally strain relief. Let's take the side covers, and we shall cut off the excess, little plastic cover, which is just a snap collar, dresses that off nicely. So while we're here, I'll spin the machine around, spool holder, push that down into place, twisty on, turn around. We need power. Please note, Little window on the side of the machine. Just peer through there. 
I shall grab my phone so we have light. But just check that this is always selected to the correct voltage for your region. The UK, we are 230 volts. Our machine is showing 230 volts. Always check this before you power on the machine. If you don't, magic smoke will appear. So, on that fine note, stop the clock. It's alive. <laughs> it's alive. It's alive. It's alive. I do like the way that Creality have made their logo glow. I'm not saying that this adds to the performance of the machine anyway, but it looks good. Right, so, setup process, English. Click next. So, privacy policy, read all the small print. If you're not familiar with this, please take the time to sit and read through all this before you actually click I have read and agree to this privacy policy. So now we're gonna be searching for our Wi-Fi network. I will skip this process for the purpose of the video and we shall select our time zone. This may take a while. I always struggle with this. So we're, we're international because we are not mainland China. Self-check, start detecting, let's go. So through the course of this process, the machine will perform various checks from heating the nozzle, heating the bed, heat brake fan, mainboard fan, input shaping, and auto leveling. Once the machine fires up into input shaping, it will basically vibrate measuring and testing resonance of the machine prior to moving on to the auto bed leveling. So now will be a good time to go and put on the kettle, make yourself a coffee, and leave it to do its thing. A few moments later. Right, so approximately 20 minutes later, self-check is complete. So we should now click OK. Bingo. We are in the UI. So there's a few things before we actually talk about the machine in more detail and whatever else and the specs. A few common misperceptions. Creality machines are shipped, whether it be this model, the standard Ender 3 V3, K1s, K1Cs, K1 Maxes, anything that's shipped with these smooth rails, a lot of people are confused about maintenance and those kind of things. The extruder moves along these rails, left to right, right to left, however you want to say it. Obviously for that to happen, inside the extruder housing you've got two bearings. Now these bearings are brass. Inside the brass there is holes that have been milled or machined out and then there has been graphite inserts. Now for those of you who aren't aware of what graphite is, it is basically the same composite that your pencil lead is made of. It is a very good lubricant. The machines are shipped from the factory with grease on these rails. And people see that and instantly think the tube of grease that comes with the machine, they should liberally apply over these rails. <coughs> Wrong answer. First thing you do before you start printing with this machine is you clean the grease off the rail. The grease is there to keep these rails clean, shiny and oxidation free, i.e. no rust spots. If you do not do that, what happens, the grease basically clogs up the graphite, which then stops the bearing from actually lubricating across these smooth rods, which results in a very chattery motion and a noisy machine. Eventually, those bearings will be useless. You will need to take them out, replace them, and start all over again. The same process you want to be following for the bed. So remove any excess grease from these rails, just give them a quick clean. You're just wiping off the excess grease. These rails, you want to be keeping clean. Get a bit of paper towel, remove any dust, fur, hair, bits of filament, strands, anything like that that are on there. Keep them clean. That is pretty much all the maintenance you need to do with this machine. Now, we're pretty much ready to talk about the spec of the machine, I guess. We have a build plate size of 300 millimeters by 300 millimeters, and we can print up to 330 millimeters high, which puts this machine 30 millimeters higher print capability than the K1 Max. Maximum speed for the machine, again, is 600 millimeters a second. However, we strongly recommend that you only print speeds of 300 millimeters a second. This is to ensure that the machine runs smoothly and you produce the highest quality prints possible. Literally, 600 millimeters would be draft quality prints. So if you want a quick prototype, one-off, by all means, print it at that speed. However, I would still recommend 
300 millimeters a second we have the direct drive extruder which produces a maximum temperature on the nozzle of 300 degrees c according to creality stats that is achieved in 75 seconds 4.3 inch touchscreen display we also have automatic belt tension in so basically there's a, a contraption going on at the back of this machine that works on pulleys and, and whatever else that's spring loaded so basically it maintains a consistent tension across the belt which is very very handy it also boasts a quick swap nozzle basically you can quickly remove the nozzle from the machine with the supplied socket spanner it takes minutes to do it's not a hard job by any means put your new nozzle in refit the silicon sock you're good to go again we have the texture pei build plate which is very very handy for printing pla pet g you could print with abs and aso in this machine however you would need to do that on an enclosure an open frame printer like this with cold drafts and whatever else where you can't control the ambient temperature would need to be done on an enclosure this will then prevent warping and all that bad stuff that you do not want to happen with your abs or asa prints we also have on the back of the machine here a filament runout sensor which again very handy addition once you're printing if your filament runs out the printer will let you know the filaments run out it will pause maintain the bed temperature so your print doesn't detach from the bed and you can reload purge some filament resume printing win we also have fully automatic bed leveling which is completed again in the initial setup process print quality and slicing the ender 3 v3 overall the print quality from that machine was absolutely fine so i don't expect this to be any different however we will be testing it and we will post the results for you to see power loss recovery so the machine in the event of a power cut or you mistakenly unplug it or whatever plug it back in straight away the printer will then let you know that there's been a power outage and it will ask you if you want to cancel that print or if you want to resume the print so you do have the opportunity to save prints i have tested this feature out on one of creality's other machines that operates on the same system as this does and it did actually work i literally started off the printer game which was 23 hours in when i like an idiot unplugged the printer by mistake i ended up with 10 millimeters and i mean 10 millimeters of under extrusion before the print actually caught up and went on if i'd have probably run a purge through the machine i would have combated that issue altogether but needless to say through my own error i did save a 23 hour print and it printed successfully so happy days pros and cons uh, this machine for anybody who's interested in printing large scale parts i.e cosplay large vases whatever it may be this machine is going to give you the build volume to do exactly that we found with this machine it is extremely solid you know the base is fully cast you've got a fully die cast aluminium frame all the belts neatly tucked away in the back of the machine this machine has been given more stiffness to the gantry by them applying these two braces which again is a very nice addition these will be tweakable basically you can adjust the frame if you notice the copy of some amounts of twist in the gantry it'll be a case of using a square and whatever else you can adjust tight and loosen whatever you need to do to these braces to actually twist it into true square so i think we shall now open up some filament side cutters when your filament literally cut 45 degree angle pop on the spool feed the filament into the bottom of the filament runout sensor and carry on feeding until you feel some resistance so the switch on the top of the extruder will flick across to unlock we will then just give the bowden tube a little bit of a wiggle if you're struggling feel the filament pop into the extruder at that point click the little lever to lock as you can see we have some unspooling issues now this implement in this instance is going to be absolutely useless basically what it's designed to do is basically put friction onto the spool to stop the spool freewheeling we will post pictures of the spool i don't even know what you'd call it the spool filament thingy in action so we will put pictures on the video for you to to see how it works but i shall see what files Creality have provided. We have a few files. Quite a few different files, actually. Creality have provided us with a top spool holder. So we can potentially mount a spool up here. Direct straight into there. Not quite sure how that would work with the filament runout sensor. 
Seems that you're going to have to run it down, back up. I don't know if that would work or not. We do have another file for the spool guider. We have a camera mount. We have a phone stand. We have a couple of different calibration prints. We have a scraper for an Ender 3 V3 Plus. We have a benchy and we have a spool. Oh, the other part of the spool guide. So basically this little bit in here with the spring. So for the purposes of the video, again, we shall do the benchy print and we shall let it do its thing. While this is getting warmed up and ready for the lift off, once the Benchy has finished printing, we will also go on to slice other models in different filaments and we will share all of those prints on screen right about now. The link for this product is in the description. I would like to highlight as a very passionate 3D printer. Personally, I always offer truthful, honest, open recommendations for any 3D printers that we stock and sell. We're more into providing the customer with the right machine for their purposes over getting a sale. Ultimately, we treat customer service on our side very, very seriously. We believe it's a fundamental part of introducing this technology into the beginner's home. Everybody should be able to 3D print if they're given the correct advice. So if you do like this machine or you like the look of this machine, please be sure to check out the link in the description. If you've got any questions, drop them in the comments box below. Please, please, please do not forget to like, subscribe and share. Goodbye for now. As always, we aim to have the most competitive 3D printer prices on the market. If you see any of our printers being sold by a mainstream retailer for less, please drop us an email using the link in the description and we'll do our very best to beat their price. Also, if you're watching from outside the UK, check the description for links to our European 123 3D sister stores.